Oh, hi, it's Tom. I didn't want to disappoint you guys and not say that. Um, still here in San Francisco. Uh, I wanted to make a two-part video, uh, a little different for me. Um, and in part one of this video, I'm going to talk about a topic that Renato just addressed in his latest video, which is fair use. Now, if you watched his video, he um, was upset that uh, he had gotten a DMCA notice on uh, his video about the DMCA and was upset that YouTube was not um, defending users and was not supporting users. And, you know, I, <laughs> I kind of chuckled because it was clear to me that YouTube has no intention of defending users. YouTube has no intention of educating users about fair use. YouTube follows the letter of the DMCA law, which is absolutely their prerogative to do so. And that's all they do. They want clearly no other involvement with users around the issue of fair use of copyrighted material. So I did a little research on my own and what I'm going to do is in the first part of this video I'm going to um, read some um, uh, some sections of a, a piece called Best Practices in Fair Use by uh, the, Associate, the Association of Independent Video and Filmmakers, um, a documentary filmmakers group. And they've done a good deal of work. They published this in December of 07. They've done a good deal of work in researching best practices in fair use and uh, have put that into a document, which of course I'll link to here in the description. Now basically, their contention is that there are two questions that you always need to ask, fundamental questions about any piece of material. And those questions are, did the unlicensed use transform the material taken from the copywriting work, copyrighted work by using it for a different purpose um, than the original? Or did it just repeat the work for the same intent and value of the original? And secondly, was the amount and nature of the material taken appropriate in light of the nature of the copyrighted work and of the use? So if you, according to their research, if you answer yes to those two questions, that is that it does that the, the work by the um, uh, uh, creative person transforms the material and that it uses an amount which um, is appropriate in light of the nature of the copyrighted work, that that is fair use. And they have four specific cases that they refer to as best practices in fair use. In case number one, the user, us, is employing, oh no, the, the, the documentary filmmaker, us, is employing copyrighted material as the object of social, political, or cultural critique. In the description it says, this class of uses involves situations in which documentarians engage in media critique, whether of text, image, or sound works. In these cases, documentarians hold the specific copyrighted work up for critical analysis. That's case number one. Case number two, quoting pop copyright material works of popular culture to illustrate an argument or point. Here the concern is with material, again of whatever kind, that is quoted not because it is in itself the object of critique, but because it aptly illustrates some argument or point that the filmmaker is developing. For example, using film clips, uh, historical film clips, to demonstrate changing American attitudes towards race. So that would be case number two. Case number three, capturing copyrighted material, uh, copyrighted media content in the process of filming something else so that Documentarians often record sounds and images when they are filming sequences in real life settings. Common examples are the text of a poster on a wall, music playing on a radio, and television program heard and perhaps seen in the background. Now, this one is tricky because if you have staged that content to be playing in the background and capture it, no good. If it is incidental, completely incidental, 
then it is fair use. Now, I believe that in Renetto's video, the one that he said he was complaining about uh, the DMCA notice and so on, uh, there, was material, there was music playing in the background. And uh, he and his daughter Daisy got into a conversation about whether or not they were breaking copyright by having that music playing in the background. Seems to me that falls under case three here. And case four, using copyrighted material in a historical sequence. Once again, using uh, material as an, if, as an effective, uh, as the best or even only effective way to tell a particular historical story or make a historical point by selecting words that were spoken during the event in question. So, uh, and this is one that you, you often see bloggers use when they are taking pieces of newscasts and so on and putting them up. All right, so those are the four instances. I'm now going to make a video that I believe um, is an example of fair use uh, case number one uh, of a, um, let's see, what, how do they call it again? Uh, copyrighted material as the object of social, political, or cultural critique. So I'm going to use a piece of copyrighted material um, and I am going to hold it up for critical analysis. And that'll be part two of this video so that in case th that video gets taken down, at least this part won't get taken down. So um, if you're interested, of course, all the links will be here. If you're interested in seeing part two, hang on. It will be following shortly. Thanks.